Okay, cyclists going around a roundabout. Describe and explain what would happen if the cyclist increased the speed of the bike significantly. Okay, let's start with the free body diagram. We've got the weight acting downwards. We've got normal reaction force acting at 90 degrees to the road here. Okay, so we need a centripetal force towards the left. We need something to provide that. So what's going to be the F in this mv squared of R? So it's actually going to come from the friction between the tire and the road, which is going to point towards the left here. So that is the centripetal force here. So if we increase the speed, what's going to happen? So firstly, if we get faster, the frictional force is going to get bigger. Okay, but there's a limit to how big friction can be. And we're going to assume mass constant, of course, which is a reasonable assumption. Okay, so if uh, we increase the speed, the centripetal force, which is provided by the friction, must increase. However, there's a limit to how big the friction can be. So if you go to, to that limit, then after that, the radius has to increase. So the person is actually going to move out away from the center of the circle. Okay, part B here, we're asked to explain what would happen if there's some water on the floor. So if there's some water on the floor, that's going to affect the friction. So the friction depends on two things. It depends on the coefficient of friction, which is basically how rough the surface is, times the normal reaction force. So if there's water, it's going to, the surface can be thought of as being less rough. So the friction is going to reduce. Okay, and if the friction reduces, the centripetal force here is going to get smaller. Okay, so that means if for the same mass of the cyclist and same velocity, uh, he's going at the same speed, then the radius must increase. Okay, so if we think of these as being constants, the radius is going to increase. So what's going to happen? Well, basically, he's just going to carry on uh, continuing in a straight line that will actually reduce, uh, increase these radius. So here's an example. So you can see here is the roundabout and then he's a cyclist. And if there's some water on the road, he's going to kind of do a curved path like this, but he's kind of going straight, and that's going to increase his radius. And let's pretend that instead of water, it was like frictionless ice. In that case, actually, he'll just move off at a tangent. He'll maintain his velocity in accordance with Newton's first law, which is where if there's no result of force, then he just continues his velocity that he, he was going at before he, um, before he lost touch the ice. Okay, to avoid skidding and to go around corners faster or even uh, with a smaller radius, we bank the surface. So this can be with true for bikes, but also for cars and any roller coasters and things like that. Okay, so the same cycle is going around a racing track with the same radius. The track is banked towards the center of the circle as shown below. Explain why the cyclist can now go around this circle faster. Okay, so let's start off with the free part diagram. We've got weight, mg acting downwards, the same as before. But now the normal reaction force, which is 90 degrees to the banked surface here, is acting towards the top left. And that's what's going to make the difference here. We still have friction acting towards the bottom left here along the surface. However, the friction is not a, the most dominant factor anymore. So we're going to ignore the friction from now on. Okay, so what's going on? So obviously it's a horizontal circle. So the weight is going to be balanced by a component of normal reaction force. The vertical component of normal reaction force is going to balance the weight mg there. Okay, so what's providing centripetal force is going to be the horizontal component of the normal reaction force here, acting towards the left, towards the center circle. Okay, so we need a centripetal force, which is mv squared of r. And if we're going around faster, that means you need a large centripetal force. And because the bank surface is banked, and that normal react, uh, the horizontal component of the normal reaction force can provide centripetal force, larger centripetal force, we can go around the circle with the same radius and same mass but faster. Okay, we're asked to calculate the top speed of the bike when the slope is banked at 30 degrees to the horizontal. The distance from the center of the mass of the cyclist and bike to the center of the circle is 150 meters. Assume the contribution of friction to the circular motion of the bike is negligible. Okay, so we've got 30 degrees to the horizontal here. We can show that the normal reaction force here is 30 degrees to the vertical. We'll just have to use a bunch of uh, triangles and geometry there. Okay, so let's, let's let's figure out the the centripetal force okay so mv squared of r that's being provided by the norm uh, the horizontal component of the normal reaction force okay so that's sine um, 30 there so n sine 30 is equal to mv squared of r okay the vertical most part here the weight is going to be balanced by the vertical component of the normal reaction force so n cosine theta is equal to mg just like before we're going to divide both sides the n's cancel out the m's cancel out and we get an equation for tan let's put the numbers in so we've got 30 degrees here v is what we're trying to find we've got the distance to the center which is 150 meters 
9.81 and you get a, a speed of top speed of 29.1 so if you start going faster than this you're going to start moving outwards um, yeah Okay, sometimes the surface can be completely vertical like this this is a common thing that you might see in circuses um, in this case is if he rides the bike fast enough he can stay in contact with the wall and not fall down okay, and stay in a horizontal circle so what's providing center force in this case well it's the push from the surface so at 90 degrees to the surface we've got a normal reaction force which is acting towards center and that's going to equal mv squared of r but he's got weight acting downwards and so what's preventing him from falling downwards is actually the friction here so the friction is balancing the weight uh, and ensuring that it stays in the horizontal circle